Hello, this is Christopher Benjamin. Um, I've been in the taverns of Wing Chiang. I played Henry Gordon Jago. What else? And other things? Watching Dr. Freedom? Yes. I am watching Dr. Freedom. Watching Dr. Freedom. Good evening, folks. How you doing, Dr. Freedom? Every really time some Dr. News, news from in and around the universe that may or may not make you go, hmm, that's interesting. You know, um, it's kind of weird because, I don't know, it, I just can't make it. There's still people out there. The series has been over now, how many, you know, a couple weeks, and yet there's people out there running around still throwing fits. And it's like somebody today tried to go on the Dr. Freedom um, Facebook page and posted on several different articles, a screen capture of the Rotten Tomatoes audience score. The problem is with this, and I've done a little more research into this, the, the audience score for Dr. Who, they, it's been getting hit on Rotten Tomatoes even before the series aired. And the problem is this turns out to be a problem that Rotten Tomatoes knows about. But we'll delve more into that in just a couple articles. Let's get to the stuff you want to see. Let's get to the stuff you want to hear. Look at it. Ah, get back over to your ship. Ah, it's crying. The phone's been ringing again. Now, a lot of people were asking, what's the point of that? I don't want to talk about it. He's been looking for me again. He has. Oh, okay. Um, Doctor Who Series 12, the real big bad responsible for the 2020 delay. And this was a very interesting article that hit over on Bleeding Cool the, um, yesterday. And I was like, there's one reason. The show has been delayed till 2020. Money, 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 money. That's right. While money is often the reason a show gets pushed back, the BBC works differently from you. And they go into the system how it works. But that's how far they stretch the budget to make she, these shows look prestigious. And they go into a, bit, a little bit about how that works. Now, the BBC has had a funding crisis for years because now the Tory government has refused to raise the license fee to keep up with inflation and the rising costs of production. That is because the right-wing government in the UK has always believed the BBC to be a hotbed of biased leftist viewpoints that never give them a fair shake. Oh, God, I faded into a newscaster voice. How did that happen? Well, but that's debatable given the way BBC News usually takes the establishment view. And but every politician left and right always complains that reporters, well, it goes a bit more into that. Also, I love the fact, here's something I had never really realized, you know, all the time I've been doing this. I never actually looked to see what's going on with BBC America. I love this. BBC America, which is a US, U.S. based commercial affiliate that's owned 49% by AMC. I had no idea about that. You see, that's something I learned today. I had always, you know, always thought that they were just, you know, their own entity and they were running around doing their thing. I had no idea that, you know, they're almost halfway owned by, you know, the same guys who give you the walking dead and whatnot. Now, and it goes a bit more into how this all happens. And matter of fact, this is the Voldemort that showrunner Chris Chibnall and his predecessor, Steve Moffat and Russell T. T. Davies will never discuss openly because they don't want to throw the BBC bean counters under the bus causing a bigger fuss than what's already been kicked off. Budget, as in when they finally get it, is the subtext of every public quote they have ever given about how, why, why the show is delayed. You can't make a show when you haven't been given the money, and the money is always in short supply in filmmaking, particularly Doctor Who. Now, somebody questioned me on that about how well, Doctor Who is the only show that you know, doesn't the only show that gets this. Yeah, it does. The majority of the time, it's Doctor Who that gets thrown under the double-decker so that the rest of these programs, oh, God forbid they delay Coronation Street or Strictly Come Butlick and get shorted an episode. But, yeah, oh, man. But, but for now, absence really does make the heart grow fonder and a lot of guys out there grow weirder. And this is what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you have strapped yourselves down into your seats. The Freedom Train is about to leap into the air like Doc Brown's time machine at the end of Back to the Future 3. Yeah. Golden Tomato Awards 2018. Best Reviewed TV Sci-Fi Fantasy 2018. 
There's a new doctor in town, and she's made such a big splash that British classic Doctor Who, now in season 11 of its reboot, topped the year's crop of excellent sci-fi and fantasy series. Season 2 of HBO's Mind Tribute Westworld, season 4 of the uh, favorite Outlander, Netflix import The Innocents, and season 3 of Amazon's Man in the High Castle, season 3, are still fill out the top five. Now, the order of, or of the rank below is reflects the adjusted score as of December 31st, 2018. Doctor Who, number one, Rotten Tomatoes. Which shows you how seriously you should take the audience score on the show. And also, another thing I learned today through a video, and I'm going to have to find it again so I can show you the link for it. Whereas this fellow sat there and he talked about um, how the BARB works, how consolidated ratings work. And it was a very well done. It was about an hour long. But then he got to the part where he discusses how audience polls work on Rotten Tomatoes. And the problem is it's very, very easy to spam them, troll them, and turn them to whatever favor you want. This happened with Black Panther, Star Wars, you know, one of the recent Star Wars movies. And, and they were even giving reviews, I found out later, of... Doctor Who series 11 before it even freaking aired. Oh man, you see what I mean? It's like, guys, are you that desperate to be heard on your opposing viewpoint that you've got to go out and pull dirty tricks? You've got plenty of mouthpieces for you here on YouTube. It's like, sheesh. Oh, I try to stay out of this argument, but it gets sillier and sillier. And like I said, Rotten Tomatoes has given Doctor Who the Golden Tomato Award for 2018 Best TV Sci-Fi Fantasy. Oh, the dislike button's going to get hit. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay, if you run over here to this article, Doctor Who is reaching a whole new audience. This is mainly a piece talking about someone who finally got to experience Series 11, amongst other things. You might want to give it a quick glance over. It's not too bad over on Wired. Okay, now get ready for this. March 13th of this year, Legopolis is going to be aired by Fathom Events in various theaters across this country. This page right here will take you to the Fando, Fandango listing. It is not even yet listed on Fathom Events. I've tried finding it today, but it's already out there ready for pre-order apparently on Fandango. So you may want to go give this a look if you're interested. Legopolis, like I said, I don't know why they're doing this. I think it's going to be a Wednesday. It's like, I can't do it. I'm going to be on overtime out my butt for the next year. Well, okay, starting in February. Also, over at the BFI South Bank, I believe this is on the 17th of February, um, they're going to be doing Legopolis there. And somebody was on the day, how come they cannot have theater events like the one in America? And I'm like, They've got it right here in the UK almost a month before it hits in the US. They're like, how come it doesn't in theaters? Because maybe because maybe you should talk to the BBC about that. Well, then again, this would fall under BBC archives, wouldn't it? But all right, moving forward. Bring back classic monsters and give us a strong series arc. All the ways Doctor Who can improve on its last series. And that's a very good valid point. I think they should bring back the series arcs. I think they, you know, I think that's one of the things that was missing that kind of took a little bit out of it this year. Um, more classic monsters. Screw the classic monsters. I want to see more classic companions back. Why is it that Sarah Jane Smith and K9 were the only ones to get an exclusive on the main show? It's like, come on, recently they did a big finish audio where Ace showed up on a class, and I'm like, oh, God, why did they make – I couldn't even listen to it. Sorry, Sophie, if you're watching. I don't think you are, but it's just I can't stand class. I I, I tried. I really did. I gave it a full season, and oh, God. All right, so I, I even tried listening to the audios. I just couldn't do it. All right, so just some suggestion right here from over here on this page on iNews. All right, coming again. All right, BBC Writer's Room adds more Doctor Who scripts for download. Now, the Writer's Room, the BBC's initiative to help foster and develop new writing talent, have added three new Doctor Who episodes to its script library in case you want to go take a look and see how you know, these things come out. And so here's the full list of Doctor Who related scripts that are available if you're into this thing. All right. So boom, 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 hey, all the way up the line, the line right there. So uh, now I see, yeah, there's new world and there's uh, some stuff for the Sarah Jane adventure. So if you're interested in all this, all the scripts can be downloaded from the BBC writer's room script library. Bar, hey, 
And the latest edition of the Toby Woodhouse's three episodes can be found here. So if this is your bag, if you want to go study how the big guys do it, and maybe you want to you know, take a shot at doing this yourself someday, this is a good chance to go study and see how they do that, you know, how a script's put together, how they do all this cool stuff. And once again, this one I just put up because remember, this is Leicestershire Live. There are Doctor Who stars. And once again, this is just a reminder of the space, you know, the National Space Center event. And I really wish I could go to one of these. I really, you know, like I said, I, I have to go wait for Chicago TARDIS to come around every year because that's the only Doctor Who convention that I can reach right now. There's, like I said, uh, I'd really, you know, cheer in for them when they pop up in Ohio. But like I said, I'm, I, if I have more news on it, I'll pass it to you. All right. So here's the, you know, if you want to go check it out, the, the science event, like I said, I think it's going to be the doctors are on Saturday. Companions will be there on Sunday so far from what I've seen. So go give this a shot. All right. So as you all know, like I said, a lot of weird. Yes. I'm in the middle of a broadcast. Matt, now listen here. Now, I don't care if you're making Star Wars money. What are you, Kylo Ren's lightsaber handler? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, a new spacious, you know, oh, yeah, new spacious place provided by Lucasfilm, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Disney's really uh, wanting you, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, in other words, you, you're you under a four-lane bridge now instead of a two-lane. Okay, well, <laughs> I got to close out, Matt. All right. Besides, I can't hear you. What, what are they singing carols around the barrel? Your burn barrel today? Okay. I don't care if they gave you a luxury shopping cart. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry about that. Good night, folks. <laughs>